DA1 will have 10 questions on cylinder head and valve train diagnosis and repair. In the previous video, we went over some of these tests. Let's continue this content area with the cylinder head. When removing the cylinder head bolts, loosen them in the reverse order of tightening. Loosen off first, then go back and remove. This is going to prevent the cylinder head from warping. Doing this while the engine is cold also prevents warping. These cylinder head bolts are torque to yield bolts. They are designed to stretch when tightened. These have a torque specification plus an additional degrees of rotation specification. Many torque to yield bolts are one-time use and must be replaced. The torque to yield bolts for this particular engine can be reused if they fall below the maximum length specification. So we're going to measure with a caliper. Our specification here is below 5.767. So we are overstretched. These are overstretched and they must be replaced. When installing cylinder head bolts, after torquing them down to specification, you can use a torque wrench that can measure degrees of rotation, or you can use a torque angle gauge. Next up, checking the cylinder head for warpage at the head gasket side. Make sure the mating surface is clean. Use a straight edge and a feeler gauge to check for warpage on six different spots. Six different spots. The maximum allowable warpage here is four thousandths of an inch. If the cylinder head is warped beyond specifications, it can be trued by resurfacing at a machine shop. Not in this particular case. If this cylinder head is worked beyond specifications, service information states that it must be replaced. This cylinder head also calls for a warpage check at the intake and exhaust manifold mating surfaces. Once again, make sure they're clean. You're going to check at three spots. Same specification. Both sides allow for machining, but only a certain amount. Some heads specify a warpage check for the mating surface at the top of the head. Here's a question. An aluminum head is being inspected for cracks. Which one of the following is not an acceptable procedure? Is it a visual inspection, magnafluxing, dyes, or pressure testing? The answer is B. Magnafluxing does not work on aluminum. Moving on to the valve stem seal. Worn valve stem seals will cause excessive oil consumption. There's three types, O-ring, umbrella type, and positive lock. The first two you can remove and install by hand. As for positive lock, you're going to use these valve stem seal pullers. You're going to reach in there with the pullers, twist, and remove. Now to install, you're going to coat the inside of the seal with clean engine oil and you can use the same tool to fit it in there. Some engines might require a driver. What you're going to do there is fit the CO into the driver and then you can place it onto the valve guide and then drive it with a light hammer. Next up, Measuring valve stem height. This is measured with the valve spring off. You're going to use a caliper to measure from the valve spring seat to the tip of the valve stem. The specification here is between 1.60 and 1.65 inches. We are at 1.63. We are at specification. If the valve stem height is excessive, this could mean that the valve is stretched the valve face could be worn or the valve seat could be worn. If stem height is excessive, this will also decrease spring tension. This is going to weaken the spring. To correct the stem height, you can replace the valve. If the stem height is still excessive, then the valve seat or cylinder head will need to be replaced. On some cylinder heads, when the seat is reconditioned, some material is cut from the tip of the valve to bring it to specifications. 
Valve spring installed height is measured with the spring installed after valve stem height is at specification. Valve spring installed height is measured from the bottom edge of the retainer to the spring seat. You can use a caliper or a machinist rule to measure it. Or you can subtract the valve stem height from this, this, this little area. Theoretically, if the valve stem is at specification, then the installed height should be at specification too. But if the seat was reconditioned and some material was grinded from the valve tip, those two would be fine, but the retainer would still be sitting higher than normal. In this case, you would be able to put some shims at the spring seat to bring the installation height to specification. Here's some camshaft measurements. First, we're gonna measure the runout of the camshaft. Place the outer journals on V blocks and lubricate them with engine oil. Place the tip of the dial indicator on one of the middle journals. The maximum runout specification here is 12 10 thousandths of an inch. If the camshaft is at a specification, replace it. Camshaft journal diameter is measured at two spots and at two points for out of round. Do that for all of the journals. Our minimum specification here is 0.9822. Last is a camshaft lobe lift measurement. Measure at the highest point of the lobe, preferably with an outside micrometer, 1.626 inches. Then measure at the spot 90 degrees from that. 1.311 inches. Subtract the two, and that gives camshaft lift 0.315. And we're gonna end the video with an official ASC practice question. Tune in to video number four. We'll talk about the engine block.